Decorators are one of the coolest features in TypeScript. We see them used all over the place in frameworks like Angular, MobX, and Stencil to help us write more elegant code. But have you ever created your own from scratch? If not, today's video is all about the practical applications of TypeScript decorators. We'll look at a whole bunch of different examples, and we'll even go so far as to implement an API that looks similar to React hooks in Angular. And we'll do it with only five lines of code. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the full source code on Fireship.io. So what is a decorator exactly? It's just a function that allows you to hook into your source code and either extend the functionality of it or annotate it with metadata. So why would you ever want to annotate your code with metadata? The answer is you probably don't. There might be some good use cases out there, but it comes more into play if you're building something like a compiler, like the Angular compiler, for example, and you need to analyze the metadata to do things like dependency injection. So decorators can provide this metadata, but they can also directly hook into your code and alter the behavior of it. And that's what's really useful to the average app developer because it allows you to write abstractions that are clear and concise. But they're almost too good at creating abstractions, so you need to be careful not to overuse decorators. It can be tempting to create a new decorator for every little thing, but they should be reserved for logic that's stable and that needs to be reused frequently throughout the app. There are five different things that you can decorate. Class definitions, methods, properties, getters and setters, and parameters. We'll be looking at examples of all these throughout the video, but basically the function that you implement will be dependent on the thing that you're decorating. In other words, the function arguments required to decorate a class will be different from the arguments required to decorate a method. I'll be using Angular for this demo so we have some actual working examples. And you can see here I'm in a component file, and I've simply taken out the component decorator and replaced it with this frozen decorator. Basically what we want to do is prevent this class from being extended. When you're extending a class with inheritance, you need to be careful with decorators because the inherited class won't actually receive the functionality of the decorator. That being said, you might just want to freeze or seal the class, so let's build a decorator to do that. We'll create a function called frozen, and it takes the constructor function from that class as its argument. From there, we can just call object freeze or object seal on the constructor and the constructor prototype. And that's all it takes to build a decorator, just one simple function. We can make sure that the class is in fact frozen by calling object is frozen with the class itself. And keep in mind that this is freezing the class definition. It's not going to freeze instances of the class. So if we create a new instance of the class, it would not be frozen. So the main purpose of this decorator is just to prevent the class from being treated as a super class. For example, if we try to create a Froyo class that extends ice cream, we'll get an error. And that's because our decorator is making the constructor read-only. So that gives us a basic class decorator, but I think the most useful decorators are for methods and properties. And I say this because I actually use method decorators on Fireship.io to automatically trigger Angular's change detection. Let's imagine we have this flavor property, and every time this property is defined, we want to add emojis to the beginning and end of it. Now, I know this sounds trivial, but we're actually hooking into the getting and setting of this property, which can be very powerful. For example, Stencil.js has a decorator called state, and it tells the framework to re-render the component if this property changes. So basically, you can just run some magical code under the hood without actually having to change the way your code works at a fundamental level. You'll notice we're calling our emoji decorator with parentheses. That's because it's a decorator factory. A factory is just a function that returns the decorator function itself. And I generally recommend writing your decorators as factories because it gives you the flexibility to pass in your own custom data as needed. Every decorator has a very specific function signature. For example, this function takes a target and a key as its arguments. The target is the parent class, and the key is the name of the property that we're decorating. So we can make a reference to the value by calling the target key. Now, if we want to listen to changes to this property, we need to replace the value with getters and setters. The getter function is just a simple function that returns the value. And the setter is also a function, but here we'll go ahead and console log so we know whenever the value changes. And then we'll also go ahead and mutate the value with our emojis. So now anytime we change the value of this decorated property, it will always have these two emojis surrounding it. Obviously, that's completely useless, but I'm sure you can find a good use case here. The last step is to override the initial property with these getters and setters. So we can do that by calling object define property and call that on the target and the key. And then we'll define our getters and setters in here. If you're not familiar with object defined property, I recommend checking out the official docs, but basically it just gives us fine grained control over how a property behaves. If we go ahead and open up the app in the browser, we should see the emojis appended to our variable value, and we should see the setter logged in the browser console. The next thing we'll look at is a method decorator. So let's imagine we have this toppings array on the component, and then we have an add topping method. Then we'll just go ahead and use this method to push a new item to the array. But let's say we have a lot of different methods in our app, and we want to make sure the user confirms these operations before they're actually executed. 
So we'll create a confirmable decorator to handle this operation for us. And I'd also like to point out that decorators are composable, so you can stack them on top of each other and they'll be applied from top to bottom. In our case here, when the user clicks add topping, it's going to bring up this confirm message and the user will have to click it twice for both decorators that we applied there. For this decorator, we'll actually pass in some custom data, which we do by creating the factory function, and then we can pass in any custom arguments that we want. The decorator function for a method takes three arguments. The target is the parent class, the key is the name of the function, and the descriptor is the actual function itself. More specifically, it's a property descriptor because a method is essentially just an object property whose value is a function. Now we're going to modify this descriptor and then return it from this function. First, we'll make a reference to the original, then we'll override the descriptor value and make sure that this is a regular function and not using the arrow syntax. So this will allow us to run some code either before the function is executed or after. But in our case, we actually want to change the entire control flow of the method. We'll do this by showing a confirm message in the browser. If the user clicks confirm, then it will be true, otherwise it'll be false. If it's true, then we want to run the logic in the original function. So we can do that by calling apply and then pass it the this context of the current function that we're in. And that's why we don't use an arrow function here because otherwise the this context would be different. So apply basically takes the original function, applies it to this function plus the original arguments. Then we'll go ahead and return the result of this function. But if the user does not confirm the message, then we'll just go ahead and return null, which will bypass the logic in this function altogether. Now I want to show you a similar example with an accessor. In other words, a getter or a setter. Let's say we have a price getter, and its responsibility is just to calculate the price based on the user's input. One thing you're not able to do with getters is pass in arguments. So instead we can create a decorator to extend the functionality so we can also calculate a variable tax value with this method. In our demo, we should see the price updated with the tax included every time we add a new topping to the order. The decorator starts out just like the previous one with the same arguments and returns the descriptor. The main difference here is that instead of overriding the descriptor value, we're going to override descriptor get. Then just like we did before, we'll override this with a new function. We'll start by just applying the original function to the new this context, and then we'll take that result and apply some additional logic to it afterwards. In this case, just multiplying the result by the tax rate and then rounding it to two decimal places. Now let's switch gears to the real game changer. How do we implement React hooks in Angular? Now I'm being sarcastic and hooks really aren't necessary in Angular and we'll still need to use a class so they're really not the same thing but they will look very similar. If you're not familiar with hooks, it's basically a function that returns a getter and a setter. When you update the value with the setter, it will re-render the UI automatically. Angular 2 has been able to do this from the very beginning but let's go ahead and use decorators to make it feel more like React hooks. So I have just a regular Angular component here, and then I have two decorator functions set up, one called useState and one called useEffect. The useEffect hook will be used to trigger a side effect to update the document title. So the template will show the count, and then it'll have a button to set the count, and then it will also update the title every time that button is clicked. So if we go down here to our component, this is how we would use the decorator. We pass in a seed value of zero to start the count, and then we define the getter and setter as count and set count. So that's our property decorator. Then we'll also define a method decorator that has this on effect method, and this will run an effect either when the component is initialized or when any value changes in the component. So we're just duplicating the same exact example that you'll find in the React docs. We'll start by implementing the useState decorator. This is a property decorator, so it has a target and a key. And the first thing we we'll wanna do is set this property to the seed value that's passed in through the decorator. The key is the name of the property, so we'll use that key to figure out what the setter should be named. We'll use some regex here to take the name of the property itself and then capitalize the first letter and then append set to it. Then we can define it as a method that sets the property value. And that's all there is to it. We just have a reactive getter and setter. Now let's move on to the use effect decorator, which is even easier. Angular components already have built-in lifecycle hooks that are similar to React's component did mount and component did update. So our decorator gives us access to the parent object, which already has ng on init defined as well as ng after view checked. So we can just take the descriptor value from the decorator and apply it to those methods. And that's pretty much it. We now have the same ergonomics as React use effect in Angular. When we click the button, you can see the value updates and the title also updates in the document head as well. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about TypeScript decorators. And if this video helped you, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.